We're going to learn a little bit more about HTML this week. We'll take the website that we had built last week and we're going to augment one of the pages. We'll be putting some different content on the bird types page and this will enable us to learn some more fundamentals about HTML. The file that we're going to start with is the file that we left off with last week. We have the three sub pages as well as the index home page. At this point I'm just going to delete my template page since I don't need it anymore. In the images directory, I've added some additional images of birds that we're going to be using on the bird type page. Let's open up the bird type page so that we can begin working on this page. Here's our bird type page right here. We're going to leave the H1 and the H2 as well as the links that serve as the navigation for our website. We'll get rid of this paragraph tag that we had placed on the page from last time and we're going to replace that with a grid of a bunch of different pictures of birds. Now because we don't know any CSS as of yet, we're going to be using a table to be able to set up the content so that it displays in a grid-like manner. Normally, you would never use a grid simply for presentation, but because we don't know any CSS yet and we also need to learn about tables, we'll be using the table structure so that we can set up our images to appear side by side. They'll be appearing in columns and rows. Once you learn CSS, you'll want to only use table content for tabular data. So if you were building a website where you wanted to display some tabular data, then that's fine. But if you were building a website like the one that we're building here, where we just want to display a grid of different titles and images, we would not want to use a table for this sort of presentation. And the reason why is because we want to keep our structure separated from our presentation. Normally you'll be using HTML tables for data that you would normally display in a spreadsheet. You'll want to organize and present the material like a schedule or statistics or something along those sorts of lines. The table element allows you to arrange and present data in rows and columns of cells. We'll begin by creating a table tag. Whenever you create tables, all of the content of the tables has to be wrapped inside the table tag. This is the main HTML element that will contain the table. By itself though, it really doesn't do anything. We'll begin by adding a TR tag. TR stands for table row. This defines the rows of the tables. Within the TR tag, we need to pass on an element that will actually contain the content. And we'll use TH tags in this case. TH stands for table heading. So we'll have our TH tag display the name of the bird, then we'll have a TH tag have the image of the bird, and then we'll create a final TH tag that will display a description of the bird. If we save our page at this point and look at it in the browser, our page is going to look like this. You can see how the TH tags are going to appear horizontally side by side. Right now, there's no real way to tell that they are part of a table, and that's because the table isn't displaying any sort of borders. We'll go ahead and we'll pass on a couple attributes to our table tag so that our table will display some borders. We're going to use the border attribute, and I'm just going to make that equal to 2. I'll save now, and if we go back into the browser and display, you can now see that we get borders that appear around the table elements. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of spacing between the navigation and our table tag. Currently, because we don't have any CSS, we'll have to do that with some markup. So I think what I'll end up doing is I'll just wrap the navigation inside of a P tag. That will force a hard return after the P tag closes. If we save now and we look at this page in the browser, you can now see that we get some additional spacing there. Remember before we didn't have the additional spacing because the A tags are simply inline tags and they don't force that extra line break. Let's create another table row that will display some content that's going to appear on our page. I'm going to create another TR tag and instead of using TH tags we're going to now use TD tags. The TD tags create table data cells. These cells are going to contain the data. For the name of the bird, we'll put small pink wobbler. For the image of the bird, we're going to go ahead and use our image tag. So I'm going to use my image tag. 
Now remember, when I pass on the source attribute, I'm working from the pages folder. So I'm going to have to go up one directory, go into the images folder, and then find the file that I want to display. For this example, we're going to be using birdo1.gif. You should always include an alt tag with your images so that the screen readers and non-visual viewers will be able to get an idea of what the image is. The image tag is a self-closing tag, so I'll pass on the space forward slash angle bracket. Now I'm going to create one more TD tag, and this is going to have a description of the bird. We'll put our content inside of a paragraph tag, and we'll write the sentence that we want to display. I'm going to save my page, and now if we go display it in the browser, you can see our page looks like this. Now my image isn't showing up, so I must have an error in my code. Let's go look quickly. You can see when we look at the image tag, I have the dot dot, but I forgot the forward slash. Make sure that you always include all of the necessary code, and if something doesn't work, go back and look at your code, because chances are you probably just made a small error in the syntax. Alright, now you can see that we have the name of the bird, we have the image of the bird, and then we have the sentence that displays. Now currently, the content of the table is hitting the edge of the table cells. That's because there's no spacing on the inside of the cells. If you want to create some additional spacing, you can do that by adding the cell padding attribute. The cell padding attribute is going to be added on to the table tag. So I'll go ahead and specify that I want to have a little bit of cell padding. And I'll save my page. And if we go back into the browser and refresh, you can now see that we get a little bit of extra spacing that appears around the edge of the table cells. The cell padding always goes on the inside of the table cells. Another attribute that you can use on your tables is cell spacing. The cell spacing goes on the outside of the cells. So when I refresh my page, you can see that now I have some more space in between the cells. Just remember that cell padding is on the inside, cell spacing goes on the outside of the cells. In this way, though, you can create some additional spacing on your web page. By using this method, though, you can easily create tables that will allow you to display tabular data in a specific way. At this point of our knowledge in HTML, using tables is going to be the only way that we're going to be able to format content so that it appears side by side. Once you learn a little bit about CSS, though, all of this formatting will always be done with CSS.